to go to the terminal and in, in this directory there are the examples that we are going to try uh, this uh, in this lesson uh, but you can also download them from the from the website uh, of the course on on the module let, let me try as guest so We are lesson lesson twelve uh, examples. Uh, you can download them as uh, as an archive from from the website of the of the course. So uh, today we are going to talk uh, about uh, uh, the while uh, construct uh, in Linux. While is like this. While the syntax command do command done so this this command here is a, a, a list of commands uh, one command or a list of commands it, it can be a test or some other command and uh, if uh, the execution if uh, uh, the execution of these commands is successful then uh, uh, the the comma the commands in the body are repeated so as long as the execution of, of these uh, commands is successful, uh, this command will will be executed as well. Uh, once it fails, then the while will terminate. So, uh, let me copy the examples here. This is a simple example with uh, while. So uh, first of all, we, we have a variable count and we give it an initial value of one. And then while uh, count less than or equal to five, uh, do echo count and then count, uh, in, we increment the count by one. And then at the end we print finished. So let's try to execute it. So we, we print uh, the numbers from one to five and then at the end uh, print finished. We, uh, we have seen an example with a menu uh, last time and this time we will implement it uh, with a while as well. So if you remember, uh, we display a message after uh, clearing the screen. We first of all clear the screen and then uh, display a message with some instructions. And then we read from the command uh, from the keyboard and we expect a number from zero to three. And according to this number, uh, we do some actions. So we, we have seen these uh, if else uh, commands uh, last time. But uh, now, in this case, uh, we are enclosing uh, all, all these commands in a while loop. So while, re oops, uh, while repl reply is uh, while uh, reply uh, is different from zero, reply is the variable that we get from, from read. And it can be uh, either zero or one or two or three. We even check here that it is uh, one of these numbers. It is not something else. So while it is uh, different from zero, uh, we continue displaying the menu and uh, getting an input and so on. Uh, if it is uh, zero, when it, uh, when it becomes zero, when we press zero here, uh, the while loop is uh, finished and we go to the end. And in the end, we print program terminated. Uh, let's try. 
So we uh, clear the screen with the command clear and then we print this message. Now we are reading something. Let, let me press one. Uh, it is uh, uh, running a command to display system information and then it, it is sleeping for five uh, seconds and then displays the menu again. The same here, it is, uh, after executing a command, it, it sleeps for five seconds and I press zero and the command, the program is terminated. So here we, we have this uh, sleep delay. So if the reply if the reply is one, uh, we output the host name and then we run the command uptime, and then sleep uh, delay. Uh, delay is a variable or a constant uh, that we declared here at, at the top. Uh, for example, three three seconds, number of seconds to display results. Now let, let's see a modified uh, version of this of this program. Uh, and here we have an infinite, infinite loop while true, which is an infinite loop. And uh, we need some way to break this infinite loop. And the, the way to break it is with the command break, similar to C and uh, other languages. So uh, for if some condition is true, for example, in this case, if reply is equal to, to zero, then break. We uh, break this, this loop. And uh, here, if, if the reply is something uh, different from uh, zero to three, so we are, we are making a pattern match here. And uh, here, this is a range from, the, from zero to three. And this uh, negates the uh, result of the match. So if the reply is not something uh, from zero to three, then we echo invalid uh, or we print invalid entry, uh, delay a, a few seconds, and then uh, continue. Continue stops executing uh, this body of the while and starts from the beginning. So we, we don't execute the, the commands that are below the continue, but start again from the beginning of, of the loop. Uh, the same for, for the other uh, replies. If the reply is one, then we print up, up time, sleep a few seconds, and then continue. Don't continue, execute, don't execute uh, the rest of the uh, commands inside the loop, but start, start from the beginning. So this is the modification that we have done, and we are using break and continue to manage the, the loop. And if uh, we try it, the execution is, is the same. So first one, wait three seconds to display this space, zero, quit. Program terminated, terminate the program. Now, uh, besides a while, there is also a command uh, until. This is the, uh, the same example uh, as well that counts from one to five, uh, but uh, this time with until. And uh, now notice the condition until count is greater than five. So uh, this is actually the same as while, but uh, the condition is negated. With while, we had we, uh, the condition was count less less than or equal to five. With until we have uh, count is greater than five. Until count is greater than five, do uh, this stuff. Using while and until, we can also read from the standard input. Uh, we, we have a text. Uh, we have a text file here and we will read from this file. Let, let's see first what is inside it. So it has uh, these lines and uh, we have an example here that uh, reads the lines from this file.
So the, there is the command uh, while here, and uh, here we we have a command. The command is read. And uh, as long as this command is successful, as long as we can read something, uh, we will do the body of uh, of the while, which is uh, printf, and uh, we'll print the variables. This read will this command read is going to read these three variables: uh, distro version and release. But uh, usually, the command read reads from the standard input, which is the keyboard. But here at the end of the while command, this is the, the end of the while command, uh, we are redirecting the standard input and we are getting data from uh, distros.txt. So this read actually is going to read from this file uh, line by line. And uh, so it reads the first line and uh, extracts the fields distro version and release. And then here we have a print formatted. Printf is print formatted. This is, this is the format that we want to print. And these are the variables that uh, will be replaced here. This will be replaced by the first variable. Uh, this will be replaced by the second. And uh, this string will be replaced by, by the third one. So let's, let's try it. So we just read the fields and we display them uh, in a different format. Distro, semicolon, and then the distro name, version, semicolon, and so on. So in, uh, in this program, uh, we are using redirection, standard input redirection, reading from a file. Uh, so instead of reading from the keyboard, we read from a, from a file, but we can do uh, we can redirect standard input also with the pipe. And uh, this example shows uh, how to uh, read it with a, with a pipe. So we, we have a command here, uh, which is uh, sorting this file according to the first field and the second field numeric. So this is the first sorting here. This is the second sorting key. And the output of this, uh, a command is piped to this to the command while and uh, so when we are we, when we are reading these uh, variables this command read is reading actually from the output of, of the sort command here and the, the result is actually the same Now, the program with the menu that we saw before, uh, we are going to modify it, uh, but this time we will replace if with another construct, with case. So here we clear the screen and then uh, echo this message and then read to uh, variable replay. And instead of if, if else, now we are using case. And let's, let's see the syntax of case. So case uh, variable in, and then we close it with a sign, uh, exact, which is uh, the case in, in reverse, like kind of parenthesis. So, so uh, if uh, the value of this variable uh, matches the, this uh, entry, then uh, these commands here are executed. And uh, at the end, this double uh, semicolon uh, terminates the, the case. So uh, after, after this one, the, uh, will, uh, the rest of the, the cases will not be matched, uh, will not be tried to, uh, to be matched. Once we find the match, then we execute these commands and this semicolon uh, exit the, the case. Uh, no other uh, cases will be tried. Mm. So if uh, the input is zero, echo program terminated and exit. 
exit the uh, program. If the uh, reply uh, matches one, echo host name, run uptime, and so on. Uh, if the if the re reply is two, uh, we run this command to display the disk space, and uh, and close the case, and so on. So it is obvious this, uh, that this one is uh, uh, with with case it, the program is easier to understand and uh, cleaner than if else. So let's try it. One. Another time. Program terminated. So uh, notice this star here. This star is uh, uh, matches everything. So uh, this is like an else case. Uh, if no other option here, uh, this is always placed uh, as, the, uh, as the last option. If no other uh, option is uh, matched, then this one will be matched uh, anyway, and it, uh, it acts like like a uh, uh, like a uh, else case. So instead of if we press, for example, five or something else, we are not doing checking here that uh, if the input is correct or not, but this one uh, does the checking anyway. Then we will get invalid entry and uh, exit with an error message, uh, with an error code. For example, seven, invalid entry. Let's see another example that shows the uh, the patterns that uh, can be matched here. So uh, this alpha is an alphabetic class, so all the letters of the alphabet, and uh, this will match uh, a single alphabetic character. Uh, this one will match either A or B or C, and uh, this one will match uh, one of the digits from, from zero to nine. So uh, together they will match uh, either B or C, or A, A or B or, or C, followed by a digit. And uh, this, for example, will match uh, three characters, any three characters, because, because the, uh, this question mark matches any character, any single character. Uh, this case, for example, will match all the files that end with uh, dot text, and the the last one will uh, will match everything. Enter word, for example, X. It's a single alphabetic uh, character. Enter word B5. It is A, B, or C followed by a, bit, by a digit. It is a word ending in uh, dot text. <clears throat> Oops. Network problems.
You are currently the only person in this conference. I'm sorry, I had some uh, network problem. Uh, let me try to share again my uh, screen. Uh, so we were testing these case patterns, uh, and if we give input x, y, z, then uh, it says that it is uh, three characters long. Let, let me try to reconnect with uh, the camera as well. Of the camera. So let's give another uh, input. For example, if we just type AB, it is uh, something else. It, it does not match uh, any of these cases. So if we give just two characters, that then it will not match any of these cases. It will match only the, the last one and. Uh, the the message is it is something else. You can also uh, combine multiple uh, patterns. So uh, this is again uh, the same menu that uh, we have seen before, but uh, in this case, we are using these uh, letters A, B, uh, C, and Q to select one item from the menu. And uh, we want uh, to be able to use uh, or to recognize either lowercase or uppercase letters. And uh, we, are, we are using this uh, vertical bar as an R. So it will, uh, if, it, if the reply matches Q or it matches uh, capital Q, then do, do these uh, steps. If it matches lowercase a or uh, uppercase a, then do these steps. So we are combining uh, several patterns with uh, this vertical bar. And uh, the rest is uh, the same as before. So let, let us give it a try. I'm pressing lowercase a, uh, it will uh, run the first item. I'm pressing uppercase a, 
again it will recognize it and it will run the the first item and the queue for quit In, in this example, uh, notice that we are using at the end of each uh, case, we are not using a uh, double semicolon, but double semicolon, but we, all, uh, we are also adding an upper sound and the end. And uh, uh, what this does is that the, the case uh, command will continue uh, trying to match the other cases. And if uh, it matches another uh, case, then it will also execute that uh, command or those commands related to to this case. So if uh, we we use just a double uh, a double uh, semicolon, then once a case is is matched, the other cases are not tried. But uh, if uh, we use it like this, then it will try to match the other cases as well, even if a, a case is matched. So uh, the pattern here will match any upper uh, case character. Uh, this uh, will match any lowercase character. Uh, this will match any alphanumeric character. Uh, this will match uh, any digit. This will match any uh, visible character or graphical character. This will match uh, punctuations, uh, spaces, and uh, hexadecimal uh, digits. So let's let's try. A is a lowercase. Uh, a is a, is alphabetic. A is a visible character. A is a hexadecimal digit. So it will match several uh, cases uh, at the same time. Uh, let's try it again. Uppercase X. So uh, is uppercase is alphabetic is a visible character. Uh, let's let's a plus, for example. Is a visible character is a punctuation symbol. So uh, notice this uh, the command read here. Uh, this P we have seen that uh, is the prompt and it will display display this message as a prompt. But uh, this option uh, minus minus n one uh, will make it to read only one character and will not uh, wait for an enter. So as soon as we press a character, uh, the read will be. Uh, Finished. Will finish. Will uh, once it gets a character, it uh, finishes. Uh, it is done executing, and it will continue below. Uh, before, we, without this this option, we will have to press enter after each input. Now we will see another topic, which are uh, positional uh, parameters. Positional parameters are the the parameters that are given to a program or to a bar script, and uh, in uh, in a bar scripting, they are denoted by these special variables dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, and and so on. And uh, this uh, simple script do, does not do uh, much, but it just uh, displays uh, the positional uh, parameters dollar one, dollar two. And so on, and uh, this dollar hash is a special variable that contains the number of uh, arguments. So let, let's give it a try. Without any arguments at all, this dollar zero, dollar zero, as you see, uh, is the first word of the command, which is the the name of the program itself, uh, including the path. And uh, there are no other arguments. Now let's say that we pass three arguments. Now uh, the variable dollar one gets the the first argument after the program name. This is always dollar uh, zero, and then the second one, the second word, the the third one, third word, and so on. 
Now, uh, we are referring to these variables with dollar one, dollar two, dollar two, etc. What uh, if there are more than uh, more than nine uh, arguments? In this case, uh, we can refer them like this, including these uh, braces or Uh, usually there is no need uh, to have so many uh, uh, characters or so, so many arguments or to, to use uh, the the big uh, positional parameters because uh, we can use another uh, technique uh, or another command which is uh, called shift. So here we uh, we display the positional parameters, uh, but using a while command. So this contains the number of uh, positional parameters. While the number of positional parameters is uh, greater than zero, do uh, argument count, uh, and we we print the the first positional parameter. And then we increase the count by one, and then uh, we do a shift. What sh uh, this shift does is that it drops the first uh, the first positional parameter, and then it uh, it, uh, it shifts the other ones. So dollar two becomes dollar one, dollar three becomes dollar two, dollar four becomes dollar three, and so on. And also the number uh, of positional parameters be uh, is decreased by one. And so, so uh, after we process the first, the first positional parameter, we shift it, discard it, and uh, we continue with uh, the next one in uh, online. Uh, Argument one is uh, A, argument two is B, argument three is uh, C, and so on. So this, uh, this script is more flexible because it doesn't matter uh, how many uh, arguments we give to it, uh, it will process uh, all of them, all the same, without having to, to change the, the code of the program or the script. This is an, another uh, example. Uh, this, this program uh, displays file information uh, for, for a given file. So here we declare this uh, prog name uh, variable or cost constant and uh, this base name gets the, the value. Uh, th this one is the name of the command, but uh, it can contain a path, a path and then the name. Uh, this ba base name drops the path and keeps only the, the proper name of, of the program of the file. Uh, then we we check the the first argument. Uh, this test checks whether it uh, exists uh, the file. If the file exists, then we run the command file on this file uh, to to see the file type, and then to to see the file status, uh, we run the command start with the file name. Otherwise, if the file does not exist, we go to the else section, uh, echo, uh, program usage, uh, uh, program usage. So we are using this variable here, using the program name. So let's try it without an argument first. So it, it is printing the use, usage message. Uh, this is the name of the file, but uh, you see that we have dropped this 
uh, path. Even, for example, if we go uh, one directory above, then we run it like this. So, uh, dollar zero contains this uh, the first word of the command, which is this one. But base uh, base name drops the path before it and keeps only the uh, the proper file name. And uh, this is what is uh, used here. Uh, and uh, now le let's say that. Uh, let's say that we are giving this file, then it will uh, it will uh, it will run the command file on the given uh, file, and it will uh, get display this output. And then for the statistics, it will run the command stat, like uh, file and uh, this one. It will give this this output, and then the command stat. Which gets, which gets some statistics about this file, display some statistics. So in the statistics, we have uh, size, uh, access permissions, and so on, uh, modification time, etc. Uh, we can implement the same same logic that we have done the, the, uh, here, but uh, inside the function. We can put all this code inside inside the function, and this is done in this example. So we have this function file info, and uh, the logic is the same. Uh, we call here file info without argument and then uh, we call here we call it here again uh, with an argument and the the argument that we give to, to this function uh, inside the function is accessed as a positional parameter parameter so uh, this dollar one will get the value that we pass to the first argument here and again which we, uh, we check that this this is a file that exists if it exists, then we uh, print the statistics, etc. Otherwise, we print uh, we print uh, an, er an error message. And uh, here in the error message, uh, again, pro prog name is base name dollar dollar zero. But here we we have another variable, func name, and uh, this variable func name is uh, defined uh, inside each function and contains the name of the function. Uh, let's. Let's test it on the left side. So the first time we called the function without an argument and uh, we will get an, er an error message. Uh, the error message is, is this one. And uh, here, func name always has the, the name of the function uh, in which uh, it is being executed. Uh, in, it, uh, in which it is being used. And then uh, we, we call the, the function a second time with an argument. And it is the normal output as before. Here is another example with positional uh, parameters. But uh, here uh, we are going to see the usage of these spe special uh, variables, dollar star and dollar at sign. Uh, this is a list of all positional parameters, uh, contains a list of all the positional parameters. Also, this one contains a list of all the position, uh, positional parameters. But uh, there is a, a small difference between them because uh, the, this list is the string list. So all the parameters are placed one after each other in a list, uh, in a string. 
but uh, this one is kind of uh, array. And uh, this makes a difference when we uh, enclose it with, uh, uh, with double quotes. So here, uh, first of all, here we have a function that prints the parameters that are given to it. So uh, we don't know how many parameters, but uh, uh, we are printing, printing four of them. Uh, maybe there are four, maybe there are less. Uh, and here we, we have a function that uh, calls this one, print params with different arguments. Uh, in the first case, we call it with dollar uh, star. In the second case, we call it with dollar star, but enclosed uh, in double quotes. Uh, in the third case, we call it with the dollar at sign. And in the last case, we enclose it in double quotes. And uh, this pass params itself is called here with uh, two arguments. Why two arguments? Because uh, uh, here we are using double quotes and this one is a single argument. Uh, we are using double quotes because uh, there are empty spaces. Without double quotes, then uh, this will be three arguments, but with double quotes, this is just uh, a single argument. So there are uh, one and uh, two arguments. And uh, the way that this uh, double star uh, will get all the arguments that are passed there is like this. And so uh, it will it will pass to to this function for arguments. But uh, in the second case, uh, because we are using double quotes, the argument that will get uh, this function is this one with double quotes, and this is a single function, uh, a single argument. In the case of uh, this one, uh, th these are treated like an array. So let, let's say uh, it is, uh, this is not an exact syntax, but it will be like this, but uh, still uh, it, will get, it will pass all the items of the array, but without double quotes, without double quotes. And so uh, again, it, it is going to, to get four arguments. But uh, in this case, it is going to get two arguments. Uh, le let's test it. So in the first case, uh, we get four single words as four arguments. Uh, in the second case, we get uh, just one single argument because it, uh, everything is enclosed in uh, double quotes. And so uh, it is uh, handled uh, as a single argument. In the third case, again, we get three arguments, but uh, in the last case, when we enclose it with double quotes, we get uh, the original arguments, two, two arguments. So uh, if, we, uh, if uh, we are calling a function inside another function, and we, will, we want to pass to it all the arguments of the uh, parent function, then we should use this one because this gives the correct uh, result. Now, uh, we are going to improve a uh, function, uh, a program that uh, we have built uh, before in the previous lessons. Uh, is, uh, here, it is in an archive because it is extracted here. Uh, let's go to this directory. So it is a, 
in an archive because uh, it is a Git uh, repository. It contains uh, several changes, uh, and I've done this in order to show the differences. Uh, Git. Uh, let me install a git quickly. So uh, this shows the uh, the log of the commits. Uh, this is the initial commit, and then the other commits. And I've uh, I've added a tag to to each commit in in order to 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 manage them easily. This is the the list of tags. I'm going to check out first the, the initial version of the program. So, uh, this is the program that uh, generates an HTML page, uh, which contains some information uh, about the system. And uh, we have developed this program, uh, or we have built it in the previous lessons um, and let Let's see again uh, what it contains. Uh, this is the title of the report. Uh, this is a timestamp, and we keep them in these variables or constants. And then uh, this function generates report uptime, generates uh, this part of HTML, outputs it to standard output, uh, report this this space, uh, out outputs this one, and. Uh, this is a command sub substitution, and this is a command substitution. So uh, we get the output of this command and uh, embed, embed it here. And uh, the third function is report home space, which checks whether we are root or not. If we are root, then uh, we uh, display the space utiliza utilization for all the users. Otherwise, uh, if we are not root, then we display only for uh, the current directory. And uh, the last part of the script or, or, of the, or the program is uh, this cut command, which displays this, uh, this uh, text. And inside this text, we are using the variable date, title, uh, timestamp, and uh, also the output of uh, these functions. First of all, uh, we can include this in, in inside the function as well. So I am making the difference between these two uh, versions. So here we are creating a function, uh, write HTML page, and inside it uh, there is this cut which generates the HTML page body. And uh, at the end of the script, uh, we call this function write HTML page. And we, we have removed this of this part because it is inside the function already. And uh, now we can add a function to display the usage of the program. Let's, let's see how it is done. So at the top of the program, we have this function usage, 
uh, which shows how to use the program with a message from her. So there are uh, three ways to use the program, uh, either with uh, the option F and the file, or uh, the option file and a file, and this will uh, generate, this will make the program to write the output to the given file. Uh, this is an HTML file. Or uh, we can use the option I or interactive. And uh, this option uh, will make the program to get the, the name of the output file interactively, interactively from the keyboard. So it will say enter the, the name of the file, we will type the name of, of the file, and the output will go to this file. Uh, and also, without, uh, it is the option help, help to display the to display this help message. And uh, here is the part of the program that uh, processes the command line options. So uh, if we give an F or we give an option file, then uh, we do something and so on. Uh, to keep track of the, of, of the options or the, of the, or the arguments, we, we use these global var variables, interactive and file name. So if interactive is empty, then the program is not interactive. If, it's, uh, if it is not empty, then the program is interactive. And uh, this file name uh, keeps the name of the file where uh, the output will be written. And uh, we process the first argument here uh, while, it, while the first argument uh, is not empty. We process the first argument and, and, and at the end we uh, make a shift so that we get the next argument to dollar uh, one. And then we process it again and then make a shift and so on until we press, process all the uh, given arguments. And here we, we have a case. Uh, we check dollar one and see if it matches uh, minus F or uh, minus minus file. Uh, if it does, uh, then we make a shift to get the next argument, and then we save uh, the next argument to the var variable file name. Because after that, we expect uh, the name of a file. Uh, if it matches dash i or dash dash interactive, uh, then we just make this variable interactive equal to one. And we'll uh, use it uh, later uh, to see whether the interactive option was given or not. And if the uh, if uh, this dollar one matches dash h or dash dash help, then we just call the function usage then we saw in the previous uh, change and then uh, exit the, the program. Otherwise, if uh, the input is something else, if the argument is something else, we just show the usage and uh, exit with an error code. Now uh, let, let's see how uh, the the script behaves uh, if uh, we give the option uh, interactive. So this is the part uh, uh, that is the part of the script that is executed if uh, the interactive option is given. If the interactive option is given, then this is not empty. This variable. So we check if it is not empty, then do uh, this part. And uh, inside the if we, we have a while true, which is an infinite loop, uh, we read the name of the file. So enter name of output file, and uh, we read it to this variable, file name. Then we check uh, the variable file name, whether it is a file or not, uh, whether it exists or not. 
uh, if it exists, then we proceed. Otherwise, uh, we check if it is uh, empty. If it is empty, then uh, continue. Continue makes the the loop to run once more. It, it goes to the beginning of the loop. Then, if the file name exists, uh, we ask whether we want to overwrite it or not. If the if the answer is Y, uh, lowercase or capital case, then uh, we just uh, break the the while loop. Uh, the if will uh, will be finished as well, and the program will continue. Ad otherwise, um, if we press Q, then we just uh, terminate the program with exit and pr print the message before program terminated. If it is uh, something else, uh, then we do uh, continue. We will uh, repeat. Uh, we will uh, we'll, uh, repeat the loop once more. So uh, at the end of the script, uh, we, add, we add this uh, code, uh, which generates and outputs the HTML page. So if the file name is not empty, uh, this test is if, if the file name is not empty, then touch file name. Touch file name uh, just makes uh, we make sure that we can write to this file name. If we can write, then we call the function uh, write HTML page, which generates the HTML page, but uh, we redirect its output to this file name. So it will be saved to, it will be saved to this file. Otherwise, if the file name uh, is not readable, uh, then is not writable, then uh, we write an error message, cannot write file, uh, file name and uh, exit with an error code. Now, uh, this is the case when uh, we have a file name, uh, which is not empty. If the, uh, if the file name is not is empty, for example, if uh, we call the, the program without any arguments at all, then file name will be empty. Then we just call uh, write HTML page without redirecting the output and it will uh, generate the HTML page and will send it to the, to the standard output, which is, which is the screen. Now, uh, this master is the, the latest uh, version of, of the program. I know that the time is uh, up, but uh, we are almost finished. We just need to, to test uh, the program that uh, we, we have seen. So we are calling it with uh, the option H, then uh, we just get a help message, uh, how to use it. So uh, without any arguments, we output the report, output the report to the standard output. If we have F or file, and then a file name, I'll put the report to the given file. Uh, if uh, we have the options I or interactive, uh, get the output file interactively from the keyboard. Uh, if we, we have the option uh, help, then just display this message. And uh, it should also recognize this one, which does the, the same thing. So uh, let's call without the, the program without any options. Then it should generate the output to the standard output, which is the, the terminal. In this case, we can redirect it as our, uh, we can redirect it to a file like this. And uh, this file contains, contains this uh, HTML uh, page. 
and we can see it with the browser. For example, uh, let's do the uh, text uh, a command line browser. Now, uh, if uh, we call this with a uh, option F. It should generate the output and save it to this file. And uh, it has done it. And uh, the same should uh, happen if uh, we call it with the file uh, with the option uh, file. So the generated HTML page is uh, saved to to this file. Now let's call it in the interactive uh, mode with the option E, I. So enter name uh, of output file. This file already exists, uh, but I'm giving it on purpose. And uh, it, uh, it detects that the file exists and says override, yes, no, uh, or quit. Uh, let's say, no, we don't want to override it. Uh, then the loop will uh, run once more. Uh, enter the name of output file. Uh, this file exists as well. Override it, let's override it. And the report is generated and the file overridden and the program terminates. Let's write again with interactive. In this case, this file does not exist, so it just uh, outputs the uh, generated page to this file and the program is terminated. So it is generated uh, correctly. So this is the end of, of this lesson. Uh, you, you can test it more yourself uh, this program uh, you want and also uh, see the output uh, see the the code uh, of the program so here we have the use it function and then uh, we have a, a main uh, function and this main function actually is uh, called uh, at the very end of the of the program and we are passing to it all the arguments and uh, we are using the double uh, quotes to, to pass them uh, correctly. Uh, and uh, here in the main function, uh, we declare this global uh, auxiliary variables, interactive and file name, and they are empty initially. And then uh, we call these functions uh, process options, uh, which is this one. Uh, and in order to process options, we give all the all the options to it. And again, we pass them uh, with uh, double quotes and with uh, this uh, dollar at, at sign. And then uh, this function interactive mode and then uh, the function output HTML page. Uh, this process options uh, has this, uh, this while with the shift here, which uh, processes all which can process all the arguments and uh, also a case inside which matches uh, the options and uh, sets the proper values to these variables file name and uh, interactive then uh, the function interactive mode is uh, when we are reading interactively the file the name of, of the file there is this uh, infinite uh, 
loop here with while, and then uh, we read enter name of output file. We check whether the file exists or not, and according to the answer, uh, we do the proper action. And uh, at the when this file when this function is executed, then we have something in this uh, file name, or we have uh, executed the uh, the program. Then the function output HTML page, uh, which generates uh, the HTML page and either redirects it to to a file or generates it and sends it to the standard output if the file name is empty. And uh, here is the page write uh, HTML page or generate HTML page. So this is to output it. This function is to output it, and this is to generate the HTML page. And uh, the main body of this one is uh, this cat command, uh, which generates the HTML document. And uh, here we use these variables that are declared here, and also this function: uh, report uptime, report disk space, uh, report uh, on space. And these functions are defined uh, below. Report uptime out outputs this uh, H2 uh, header and also the the con the content of the con or the output of the command uptime. Report this space and then uh, report on space. And at the end, uh, we just call the uh, the function main. Okay, let, let's see if there are uh, any questions. Or if you if you have any questions, uh, turn on the mic and uh, speak. Anton says that Firefox gave me proxy error and invalid certificate. Uh, now I'm in Chrome. Uh, Anton, I, I had some problems with uh, the server of uh, Moodle with the Moodle server. Uh, I made an update to it, uh, but then. I failed to to install to install it properly, and I had to move it to another uh, server. And uh, then uh, I I couldn't get the SSL certificate because uh, the <coughs> because the DNS was was not propagated. Uh, I, I I just did it uh, today, and later it was propagated, and uh, now it should be okay. Uh, Proxy error, the proxy server received an invalid response. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dashamia. You are welcome. It's a pleasure. Okay, I'm closing for today. Bye, see you next week.